Welcome to the transmissions. In the previous episodes, we have seen that there is no individual and there are no objects. These are just illusions. The illusions, they come and go. They appear and disappear. There is a very special kind of object which we call as the body. And there is a special kind of belief that is attached to this object that we call as this person. These both are illusions. They appear, they are accumulations of the patterns and they disappear. When this illusory person, or when this illusory object, the body, disappears, we call it the death. There are so many blind beliefs and superstitions that are being associated with the death because it is almost impossible to know what it is using our day-to-day -day experience, using our day-to-day -day intelligence and logic. It defies all logic. It is beyond our ordinary experience. And so obviously there is a large amount of ignorance regarding the disappearances of the illusions of the body, the world and the mind. People have very funny kind of beliefs, like some people believe that death of the body, the destruction of the body means the destruction of all experience. There is nothingness after death. Some people think that this body is me and when this body is destroyed, I am also destroyed. They do not exist already. There is nothing there which is destroyed except the body. The body is just an accumulation of the organic matter. It is accumulated out of the environment and it returns to the environment as it was. Nothing is really destroyed. It only changes form. The accumulation is distributed, recycled back in the environment. It appears as other forms. The characteristic of the illusion is that it is impermanent. It keeps changing. It changes whether you want it or not. It changes whether this mind has preferences in one way or the other way. It changes according to its own nature, according to its own laws. Then some people have this belief that I am going to continue even after death. I will get a brand new body and I will appear in a brand new world, some kind of heaven. And some people are afraid because they have done something wrong in their lives and they think that they will appear in a hellish world. They will be punished after death. Even if there is no body, they are going to be punished. The whole lives, they have believed that I am the body and when there is no more body, a body, their belief shifts to some other kind of body in some other kind of world that is going through the punishment. These are the superstitions. There are few more people that believe that the consciousness continues after the death, that means after the destruction of the body. That is another kind of superstition, that is another kind of blind belief. The consciousness was not born. And there is no point in saying that it will continue after death. The consciousness is not personal and therefore the experience is not personal. That which is conscious does not belong to a person and the person itself does not exist. So all these made up scenarios are purely imagination of a fertile mind. There is a lot of fertilizer that is being poured into such minds by the society, by the conditioning. And therefore, there are a garden variety of blind beliefs that surround this uh, very 
ordinary experience called death. So let us start analyzing this thing called death. We can start by asking this question, what is death? And as we have seen that the death is not of a person because the person does not exist. The death is something which happens to the body. It is a change of state of the body. That which is born will die. or That which is assembled will be disassembled. This is the rule in this world, in this illusion. The body was assembled out of matter and it will be disassembled. It will be returned to the environment. And that is what death is. It is nothing else. And so we can define death as a total destruction of the body. It is not stopping of the breathing. It is not stopping of the heart. Or it is not the stopping of the nervous system of, or any of its parts. It is total disintegration of the body. Return to the environment. Clearly there are many definitions. They are all confusing. They are, people are not even sure what is death and so they assign different states of the body as death. So we are going to say that there is only one way to be sure that the thing is dead and that is when the body is totally disintegrated into pieces, into dirt and is no more recognizable as a body. That will be our definition of the, of the death. Now let us examine the beliefs that are surrounding this event. This is an event where the illusion of the body is destroyed. There is no more a body. It is not a death of the person because the person is already not there. The individual is already an illusion. It is not destroyed because it is not there. It is not a destruction of the world. The world does not disappear. Because the world itself is an illusion, it was not there, so it is not destroyed. So what is actually destroyed? The illusion itself is destroyed, the illusion itself is gone. That is all death is. There can be two points of view in order to study what death is. The first is the point of view of the others and the second is the point, point of view of the self, my own point of view. We can apply these two points of views to the four kinds of experiences that we are talking about in our series of transmissions, which are the experience of the world, the experience of the body, the experience of the mind and the consciousness of these experiences. So let us see what happens to these experiences from, the, from these two points of views my own point of view and the point of view of somebody else. From the point of view of somebody else, the world stays. Destruction of one body does not imply the destruction of the whole world. That is very, very certain. We are very sure because we see people dying every day. Millions of people, they are dying every day. But the world remains. The world goes on as usual. From the point of view of the dead person, the world is an unknown because the experience has disappeared. The body is the one that provides us the experience of the world because of the senses. The senses are part of this body. And when the sen senses become dirt, when the body disintegrates, there is no more an experience of the world. What will be there if there is no world? That is unknown. Precisely because it is not our experience yet. We cannot say anything about anything if we do not experience it first. So from my own point of view, the world becomes an unknown. Is it there or is it not there? Impossible to know without a body. Let us talk about the body itself. As we have defined, the body disintegrates completely. It is a redistribution of the matter of the body into the environment. That is very, very certain from the point of view of the others. The body is no more. 
from my point of view, the subjective point of view, the body becomes an unknown. Because how do I know the body? There are only two ways to know the body. The first is using the senses, the external senses. The body appears as another object in the world. Without the senses, the body becomes an unknown. I won't even come to know what happened to the body because the, and the state of the body cannot be known now. It, it will be an assumption if I say that the body will be destroyed. It, it cannot be said because there is no experience of the body being destroyed. Because we get this experience of the body via the senses. The other way to know the body directly is through the internal senses. The internal sensations of the body. And if the body is destroyed, the internal senses are also destroyed. Now there is no more a sense of breathing or heart beating or pain or pleasure or hunger or balance or tiredness, heat or cold in the body, nothing. The body becomes an unknown, cannot be known what, what is happening to the body from the subjective point of view. The experience of the mind is an unknown. We have never experienced the mind in absence of the body. There can be a little bit of grey area here because we do experience a mind when the body is forgotten. Like in the sleep, the dreams appear in absence of this physical body, which, which are a part of the experience of the mind. So there is a little bit of grey area here where whether I can experience a mind without a body or not, that is not sure. So it is an unknown really. We have never experienced a mind without a working body, without a working brain, without uh, a functioning organism. There is no experience without that or even if there is, there is no memory of it. So the mind becomes an unknown for the person who, who is dead from the subjective point of view. From the objective point of view, it is still an unknown. I cannot know the state of the mind of the person who is dead. The mind that owned the dead body is no more accessible to me because the only way to find out if there was a mind there that owned the body, the owner of the body, was through the body. The body expressed the mind. Without the body, there is no way to know what happened to the mind. There is no way to know what happened to the individual that gets created in the mind. And there is no way to know what happened to the memories of that individual. The memories that the individual claimed are mine. So from the point of view of the other, the mind becomes an unknown. It is very interesting because there is this blind belief in our society that the mind disappears with the body. But that is not true because nothing can be said about the mind after the body is gone. You will need to find a dis destroyed mind. You will need to find see the disappearing of the mind, which you cannot because mind is a subjective experience. Only I can know about the mind, nobody else. Even in the waking state, even in the alive state. And the others have no idea of my subjective experience. They only guess that there is a mind here because it is being expressed through the body. The body is talking, the body is saying that I am thinking, I am seeing, I am having this experience or I am having that experience. In absence of the body, this expression is not possible and it is not possible to know whether there is still a subjective experience there or not. So honestly, it is not possible to know what happens to the mind when the body is destroyed. It is a blind belief. It is, a, it is an assumption to say that there is no more a mind. The mind does not exist if the body becomes dirt. So the mind, very interestingly, is an unknown for others. Let us look at the consciousness. From the point of view of the consciousness itself, the consciousness is an unknown. 
The consciousness knows itself by reflecting itself out of the experiences. I know that there is an experiencer only because there is an experience. The experiencer knows itself as a reflection of itself via the experiences. No experience, no experiencer. This is very, very logical. This happens every night when we enter into the deep sleep where there is no experience or the experience is so dull and so beyond our perception that it appears as if there is no experience and the corresponding experiencer is also not there. And therefore, people say that I was unconscious in deep sleep. So, without the experience which is being provided by the body, the consciousness becomes an unknown of death. We have never seen a consciousness which was independent of the body. You have never experienced a consciousness without a body. And that is why, in the absence of the body, you cannot say anything about the consciousness. Nothing can be said. Consciousness is unknown. Similarly, from the point of view of the others, what happened to this consciousness which was expressing through the body, like the body was telling them that, look, there is a consciousness. The consciousness is experiencing through this body. And when the body is no more, when the body has dissolved back into the environment, there is no way to find out what happened to that consciousness which was claimed when the body was there. Yes, I am pretty sure about my own consciousness, but I am not sure about what happened to that experience when the body was destroyed. So from the point of view of the other, the consciousness is also unknown. It is very interesting because there is this blind belief, a superstition among people that the consciousness disappears after the body is gone, after, after the body is dead, destroyed. But the truth is, the consciousness becomes an unknown. Nothing can be said about the consciousness because the one holding the consciousness is not here. Right now also, you cannot say anything about the consciousness as being described by the others. You do not know whether the others are conscious or not. You are sure about your own experience of the consciousness you have no knowledge of the experience of the other consciousness, except indirectly as reported by somebody else. You trust somebody else and then you assume, yes, probably there is also a conscious experience there, but you are not certain. You cannot be certain. Actually, you are not certain, certain of anything actually here in this illusion of the world. Just like we discussed in the episode on the illusion of the world and only the subjective experience exists. There is no objective experience. What we call as the objective experience is mutual agreement among our subjective experiences. You do not know what the red, red color looks like to me. You do not know how the sounds the sound to me. And you do not know how the objects appear to me. How do my thoughts and feelings appear to me? And how do my dream look like to me? You have no knowledge of these things unless I tell you and if they match your knowledge, if they match your experience which is also subjective, then you can agree or disagree upon it. If you agree, we call it an object to experience. Yes, you saw the same thing which I saw, but we never see the same things. Each of us sees a different world which is, which is totally subjective in nature. So, essentially, we are uncertain about the existence of the world also. And because the body is just another object in this world, it is a part of the world, part of this environment, which we call as the world, we are not really sure about the body also. The body appears as a subject to experience. There is no certainty of any kind regarding any experience. The only certainty that I can have is that there is an experience of some kind. That is all I can conclude. I cannot conclude anything else about this experience. And I cannot conclude anything about the experiencer also 
because in absence of the experience there is nothing there there is no memory which stores the existence of the experiencer which tells me that there was an experiencer which experienced something there is no memory like this we are not even certain of the memories because they are fleeting we are not certain of the mind because yet another illusion yet another experience we are not certain of what causes the mind what causes the body what causes of the world what causes this world we are not certain about any of the causes actually why because it is an illusion there is no certainty of any kind in the illusion what i am certain of is that there is an experience and there is an experiencer without the experiencer there cannot be an experience and that the experience is appearing in the experiencer on the screen of the experiencer there appears an experience it is of different kinds just like we said, we saw and we are not certain about any of these experiences actually the table that i am showing here you can write unknown everywhere you can substitute these names that are cooked up by a mind with unknown with uncertainty now with this kind of eye opening analysis what can you say about the death <laughs> you cannot say anything certainly about the life also why are you so certain about the death what has happened to all of your beliefs and superstitions that you gathered around this illusory event of death you have assumed so many things about the death because there is no knowledge in the absence of knowledge what do we do we assume things and when many people start saying the same thing we simply think that it is the truth it is a consensus opinion that is all it can be it can never become anything better than that how to know the death you will that is you know almost certain that you will the only way to know death is by dying and we are certainly not in a hurry we don't want to know it just now but we can at least drop the blind beliefs all this stupidity that was stuffed into our minds by the society regarding death regarding life regarding this body regarding this individual it is all wrong it is all lies it is all assumptions superstitions invented by ignorant random people that is all we can do we can drop it when the experience happens the knowledge will arrive not right now there is no way to know there is no way to know that without dying we can at least try a few things there are two ways to get an idea about that actually without really experiencing the death you can know a little bit about the death death the first way is logic and the second way is experiment remember there is no third way you cannot know what is death simply by listening to others who are totally ignorant about what it is you cannot know what's death by reading about it reading about an experience does not give you the experience So let us try the method of logic first, the rational, critical thinking first. We can formulate some laws regarding the phenomena that we observe around us by studying the nature of our own experience. What do we observe here? And in the context of the death, I'll give you a few observations. The first is that which is born will die. this is the rule here that which is assembled will be disassembled it is a matter of time there is something called entropy that is happening here 
it takes energy to keep a structure going in this world, in this illusion. It is very interesting that the illusion is maintained by providing an energy to it. Otherwise, it disintegrates. It is disintegrating every second. And the second law here is that in order for that thing to disappear or disintegrate, it must change. If it is not changing, it will not die. It will not disappear. It will not be destroyed. This is very logical. This kind of very sound logic. The third observation is that an observer must be present in order to experience the disintegration, disappearance, destruction, death, whatever you want to call it. When the experience ceases, you can call it with these names. But you must be present to see it, to experience the disappearance or stopping of that experience. It must be experienced, otherwise you cannot say that it happened. You cannot conclude anything about it if the observer is not there. And the observer is always subjective observer. That means it is you, the conscious person, which is you. And the fourth rule is that no blind beliefs are allowed. No assumptions are allowed here. What are assumptions? It's just cooked up imagination. It is not going to give you any knowledge. Whether it is yours or whether it is somebody else's. It does not matter how big authority that person is. He is still alive. He has never seen death. So please do not believe anybody blindly. You are a truth seeker and beliefs are your enemies. Blind beliefs. You can believe something which you have experienced. Probably. It is also very tricky because sometimes what we experience is not really true. So no assumptions, no theories. That is what is the logical method. That is the first method to know death. So let us check what was born out of these four experiences because there is nothing else except these four experiences. And there is only one experience actually, just like we saw in our previous episodes. There is only one experience which is the experience of the mind. But for convenience, we divide it into four experiences, four kinds of experience. It is for only for convenience, just so that we can talk about this experience of the mind. What happens to the world? Whether it was born? When we ask this question, whether the world was born, we come up with no answer because we never saw the world appearing out of nothing. We appeared here, not the world. That is our direct experience. Some people may like to say, well, I was born and the world appeared to me. Well, then, then by that definition, when you will die, the world will disappear with you. But that is kind of a subjective point of view. Uh, the consensus is that the world stays. So we say the world was here before the body was born and the world will stay after the body is gone. The body is an appearance in the world. So the world is going to stay depending on how you look at the world. So for, for the time being we can say that the world is going to stay because it was not born. We have never seen the birth of the world. We have seen the birth of the experience, birth of the memories. Like We remember that there was a start of the world, but we are not really sure whether that was the start of the world or it was the start of me. We are not sure. What is the consensus? The people say that the world was already there when this body appeared, when this person started becoming aware of the world. So it is very, very logical because we do not see the birth of the world. We cannot say that it will die or it will disappear. That is very logical. The second experience, the body. We are pretty certain that the body was born. Although, from my point of view, I have never seen the body being born. Somebody told me that the body was born. The birth is a process of assembly, a process of accumulation. That is what birth is. And the accumulation is going on since the beginning of the universe. 
you were not born out of nothing you were born out of another body and that body was born out of another body so on it is there is no beginning really of the body but there is a beginning of the this body which is in time of the birth which happened at that time and it, it appeared already as an accumulation a tiny one and then more assembly happened and this assembly also happens every day this body dies every day actually the body that was yesterday is not here now it is dead it, it has been replaced by a new body which is constructed out of the matter that we breathe and that we eat there is there is a new body every second so it is going to disassemble because well it is also changing in the third rules in the second rule says that that which changes will change into nothing one day it will it will be it will become unrecognizable it will change so much and so we are pretty certain that the body is going to disappear it will die we do see the bodies being born and we do see the bodies dying so the observer is present to see the birth and death of the body you can say but no i cannot see the death of my own body the destruction of my own body and that is true but there will be an observer there will be an observer who will see the death of this body just like there were observers who saw the birth of this body now let us look at the mind can we say that the mind was born mind is the subject to experience which nobody else can know that is the definition of the mind for for the purpose of this discussion so we do not really remember the construction of the mind out of what was it assembled but we are pretty sure that it is changing isn't it the mind is continuously changing probably it is changing much faster than this body so using our laws we can conclude that yes there is a there will be a time when the mind will disappear now it is another matter whether it will disappear with the disappearance of the body or whether there is another death for it whether there is another time for its death because we really do not know when was the mind born there is no observer for this appearance of the mind even i do not know when the mind was born i cannot recall any such observation it is an assumption to say that the mind was born with this body there is no real observation like that and even the others cannot say when was it born because mind cannot be seen mind is not an object which is in the which is a part of the world it does not belong to this world the mind is a different experience so using our laws we can conclude that because nobody observed the mind including myself there is no birth of the mind and there is no death of the mind but there is a change in the mind and we cannot be sure how long this change will continue it is certain that it will it will change into something which is not recognizable as this mind but it is not certain whether it will be destroyed completely anyhow there is no destruction there is only a change one form changes into the other for example when you break a glass we say that the glass is destroyed but only it is a change of the form the, the glass is still there in another form now it has become dirt it is it is you know many pieces on the floor it is no more useful and that is why we think that there is no glass but even before the glass was assembled there was glass in the form of sand the sand was there in the form of rocks and so on the rocks the rocks were there in the form of crystals and atoms the atoms were there in the form of energy and vibration nothing is really destroyed here it only changes the form so the birth and death are nothing but a change of form if it becomes unrecognizable we say that the form is destroyed but 
the elements are not destroyed that which is which constitutes that form simply is redistributed in another form so we are very very certain about what will happen to the body it will be redistributed in the environment but we are not sure about the mind because we do not even know out of what elements the mind was constructed we can say that they are the vibrations of some kind because that is all there is so that the change is the only experience that we experience we do not experience anything except change and just the technical word for change is a vibration vibration is the change so we can say the mind was made up of the vibrations in this uh, subject to experience and uh, the vibrations will change into some other form what form we are not certain we have never experienced it in our lives as this body so there is possibility that there will be a form there the mind will take another form but we do not really know what form it is not logical to conclude that the destruction of one form which is this is body has any bearing on the destruction of the other form which is this mind it is illogical especially when you do not know what is this body and what is this mind <laughs> you do not know that simply assume that you know you you are experiencing it but you really do not know and that is what the death shows us the death is a door beyond which there is unknown and since the death destroys all our assumptions all our illogical beliefs we are afraid of it and there is the only fear there is the fear of the unknown so there is a possibility that the mind will change form into something which cannot be recognized now but there is no certainty that everything will be destroyed about it just like not everything is not destroyed in case of the body and in case of the world something remains in a different form we can conclude logically something remains of the mind in a different form it is very interesting because you never thought about this thing before that there is a logical possibility although we cannot say anything about it with certainty because we have never experienced such a mind which was present without a body or a mind which was present in some other form in this this assembled form now let us take a look at the consciousness and try to apply the laws there when was the consciousness born and it is kind of a very difficult question because nobody knows even i don't do not know and whether it will die if i do not know when it was born i cannot conclude when it will die that is inconclusive regarding the death of the consciousness is it an assembly of some kind and what is it assembled of that also we do not know because we do not see any matter in the consciousness we see vibrations in the mind because it is a, a, an experience but the consciousness is me the consciousness is the experiencer it is the witness it is the self it is not made up of any vibrations it is that which experiences all kinds of vibrations all kinds of experiences it is the one that is experiencing it cannot be made up of anything else because if you say it is made up of something then that thing the substance will become an experience it will not remain an experiencer so we say that the consciousness is made up of nothing it is emptiness shunyata it is zero zero dimensional it does not have any extents because it's not a, it was not assembled out of anything so logically we can conclude that there was no birth of consciousness so using this rule we can say that there will be no death of consciousness <laughs> that is that is probably the only certainty that is probably the only good news yes there will be total destruction of the body there will be destruction of the mind when we don't know but there will be there will be destruction of the world because it will not be there as this experience which is being provided by the body 
but we are fairly certain that the consciousness, nothing can happen to it. Let us try to apply the law of the change to the consciousness, how the consciousness is changing. Now we are very certain that the experience is changing. Everything that is changing is the experience. What about the experiencer? The witness that is witnessing the experience, is it changing? Is it made up of something which is transforming in some, some way? And we come up with no answers because we cannot see anything. Now you can be certain of it because you are the consciousness. There is a consciousness there. It is very, very certain. So whatever you see in that consciousness, you can be absolutely certain. First thing you are certain is that it is there. The second thing you are certain is it has no form. It has no shape. It has no extent. There is nothing there which can change. It is emptiness. You are absolutely certain of that. It is not an experience also. It never started also. And so you are certain that it will not end also. And actually it cannot be seen as starting and ending. Because as soon as you assume that the consciousness started at one point, there needs to be an observer of that consciousness starting there. And the observer cannot be anybody else except the consciousness. So it is logically impossible to witness start of the consciousness because it is the consciousness itself that sees, that can see any kind of start or any kind of end. If you assume that the consciousness started at one point in the time, well, you must be present there to observe that beginning. Just like our law number three says, that there must be an observer in order to conclude the beginning or assembly or birth of something. But that is an impossibility. If I can experience the beginning of the consciousness itself, that means I was already conscious before the beginning started, before the beginning of consciousness. It is kind of funny, but it is very, very solid logic. Similarly, I can say that I experience the death of the consciousness. I experience the dis disappearance of the consciousness. That means I am present here to experience that disappearance, which is again illogical because how can I disappear while experiencing the disappearance? It is not possible. Can somebody else experience the appearance of the consciousness or, 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 or end of the consciousness? No, because it is not something which can be seen in the world. It is not in the world. The consciousness does not appear in the world. The world appears in consciousness. <laughs> Nothing can be said about it. Because it is not changing also, it is not made up of anything which changes. We can certainly conclude that it will not end. There is no death for consciousness. There is appearance and disappearance of experiences of all kinds. But the experiencer cannot appear or disappear. It is logically impossible. <laughs> it was never born and so it will never die. It never changed so it will not change into some, some other form. It has no form. It does not take any forms. It is the witness of the forms. And I am that consciousness. That is probably the only good news that you will hear in this whole world, in your whole life. <laughs> there is nothing good here. Except this. So we are very certain that consciousness was not born. It will not die. It does not change. And there was no observer to observe the beginning of the consciousness. There was no observer to observe the end of the consciousness because it will be the consciousness itself. There is another thing, which another tool, logical tool that we can use to establish the perpetual nature of consciousness and that is the absence of time. Just like we saw on the episode on the illusion of the time, the consciousness does not experience time. The time arises as an illusion created by the mind, created by the memory. If there is no memory, there is no mind and there is no time. Consciousness is timeless, eternal, fundamental reality where the time itself appears. So. You can say that since there is no time, the question of the beginning or the end does not arise. This is, this is very, very interesting. 
and this is very advanced kind of logic because then you can ask what about the start of the world then because there is no time then it does not apply to the world also there is no start of the world also and now it is true from the point of view of the consciousness which is the only point of view actually there is no other point of view you have never seen anything from any other point of view except the point of view of the consciousness so you can conclude that oh the world was also you know not born the bodies were also not born and the person was not born and the mind was not born in time it appeared at once this everything appeared at once and there is a very interesting metaphor that describes this kind of experience and that is your dreams when you dream at night the whole world appears a body a dream character appears a mind appears you start feeling thinking in the, in the dream the whole history appears of this character not only that the whole history of the environment appears you can see the ruined buildings there in the dream you can read a history book in the dream you have your parents in the dream which existed before you or you think there will be and you can see the deaths in the dream you can even experience your own death in the dream you experience the disappearance of the world in the dream but it did not really happen everything appeared and then disappeared and like in the waking state the dream also has no time the time appears in the dream as a part of the dream so that gives us a hint about about the nature of the existence that it is timeless nothing is happening here in terms of the time there are no beginnings and there, there are no ends and since the time is not passing nothing is really changing <laughs> the change itself is an illusion created by the memory because we have seen that no memory means no change and no experience nothing can be experienced without the mind what does that tell you about the death now it is an illusion just like everything else it is an event which is illusory just like every other event it is a part of the dream which you call life there is nothing else there is nothing substantial there is no truth in saying things die <laughs> it is an invention of the society the ignorant people in our society nobody really knows what is this nobody really knows what is this existence they are very certain about all these things my job is to destroy the certainty my job is not to tell you anything which is certain that which is certain that you that you already know the only certainty is your own existence this presence that you are the conscious presence that you are you are existence yourself because there is nothing else in the existence except this conscious presence everything else is appearing and disappearing including the bodies which you are so fond of <laughs> and you cry when one of these bodies they disappear somehow <laughs> isn't it stupidity you think i am going to die oh no i am going to die i need to enjoy as much as possible before i die what are you enjoying here what is going to die here there are some people the so called spiritual people they are more certain than anybody else actually and they think i'll reappear here i'll be, i'll reborn here there will be reincarnation of myself here what kind of stupidity is that what experience tells you that you appear and disappear you are ever present you are timelessly eternally present how can you appear and disappear as forms yes the forms can appear and disappear that is our direct experience you you do not appear and you do not disappear there is nothing there to appear there is nothing there to disappear it is not happening in time there is no possibility of you appearing or disappearing you do not take form the forms are you the forms appear in you you are the screen on which the movies appear the movies disappear can you say that the screen took the form no the screen is the form there is no form without the screen you are that screen why would you 
identify yourself with the forms that come and go, appear and, and disappear, incarnate and discarnate. <laughs> Where is the truth in that? If you can experience it as coming and going, it is not you. This is the rule. This is the logical rule. The observer is not the observed. And the subject is not the object. Why do you think that which appears and disappears, takes birth, is you? That is stupidity. Now, the other way to know the death is through experimentation. And no, I am not recommending that you die and find out what is, what is death. Because it will happen, you see. It will happen one day. It is very, very certain, actually. Even if you think, I am not going to die, or I am not going to die tomorrow, or I am not going to die the next minute. That is foolishness. Don't be so certain. The form can disappear anytime. It is very, very fragile and it is an illusion. It can go anytime. Don't get attached to the form. Otherwise, there is suffering. <laughs> Which is kind of stupidity because what are you suffering actually? What are you suffering about? What does the suffering consist of? Clinging to an illusory form that is already dead, that is already going. <laughs> this dead body, which looks like a robot, is the reason of your suffering. How intelligent is that? So there are ways to find out what can happen to the body and mind and consciousness and the world without really destroying the body, because we have defined the death as a destruction of the body. So it is possible to simulate the death. It can be done by pretending that you are dead. You can try to forget the body. You can try to see what remains of the experience when this experience of the body is not there. Because just like we saw, we have never experienced anything else in the absence of the body. At least you do not remember it. So what we do is we try to experience something while forgetting the body. How to do that? How do you know there is the body? How do you know you are inside the body? Or the body is inside you? It does not really matter. You see, there is no inside or outside in the experience. It is all mind created. So... The senses are the only thing that tell us about the body or this world. If we ignore the senses, you don't need to destroy them because it's going to happen anyway, you see. So do not try to destroy them and try to learn from this experience of the body. So we ignore the senses. And fortunately, our minds are capable of that, which happens every night or every day, whenever you sleep. The sensory inputs are ignored when you disconnect the senses from your experience, which is a possibility. It is very much possible, you see. You will get an experience without the body. You will arrive at an experience that is without the body. Now, do not assume that this is an experience without the body. It is simply an uh, enactment of death is not real death because the body is still there. You will be back in the body. Very, That is very, very sure. It is certain. But you can get a glimpse of what can be the experience when it is not an experience of these five senses or the internal senses of the body also. You need to forget the body completely. Not only these five senses. You will need to disconnect from the internal senses also. And then we connect to the mental senses, something which I call as non-physical senses, about which we are going to talk later in detail, how to do all these things. But that, you can guess now, is a state of the mind. It is an altered state of the mind. It is no, no more a waking state. And it is not also a dreaming state or the a state of sleep. And it is certainly not the state of death because the body is safe and in the, in, in the same one-piece structure. So, <clears throat> that is experimental ways to find out the nature of the experience without the physical body. 
you can form a set of theories here. I mean, I'm going to be lenient. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit lenient here for a while because experimentation demands some kind of model making process, you see. Without a model, without a structure of your experience, you cannot actually explain the experience. So you can start forming theories here based on your own experiences, based on your own experiments and try to conclude something about the state of the death. It is slightly more controversial and you can say, oh, well, well it will be subjective. Yes, this is called subjective science. The science of the mind is entirely subjective. It, it depends totally on your own experiment. You can compare notes with others who are doing similar exp experiments, but you can, cannot conclude anything about the truth of it. Your experience can be completely different. But I can assure you that it will be mind-blowing experience. That will do one thing, which is our goal here in this series about the illusions. It will destroy all your blind beliefs. That is what you want. Ignorance is presence of blind beliefs, assumptions, the brainwashing, the conditioning that happened through the society, the ignorance that was stuffed into your mind by, this, uh, by other ignorant people, the experiments are going to destroy that ignorance. That is the biggest achievement of your life actually. This whole life is kind of useless dream if you do not know what it is. If you do not at least try to know what you are, what this experience is, it is completely useless waste of time, you can say. <laughs> it's a waste of a lifetime if you do not explore. That is what a seeker is doing. The seeker is exploring. Do not make, a, make death as a monster that is going to eat you. Study it. Study and dispel the darkness. That is your ignorance. It is just another illusion. Now study this illusion. It is very interesting. And it is going to happen. So be prepared. How can you prepare? Not by reading about it. Not by listening to all these stupid stories about death and after death and before birth and whatever you see. You can prepare only by experimentation. And the logic and rational abilities of the mind are of help here. Experiment logically. Be the decider of your own truth. Be the judge of your own experience. Don't let anybody else tell you you are right or wrong. You see, I have seen the self-appointed judges of the truth who tell you about your own experience. They do, not, they do not know anything, a damn thing about their own experience, but they judge others' experiences. They tell them you are right and you are wrong. Do not be a judge. Be a detective. Be the inspector who inspects the scene of crime. Do not pay attention to the person who is sitting in the armchair and judging what the detectives are detecting. They are stupid people. They are ignorant people. Explorer knows by exploring. Thank you for listening. Oh, oh, oh.